sinuses and the vertebral column. Um, sinuses are mucus lined air filled sacs found in the frontal bone, the sphenoid bone, ethmoid bone, and paired maxillary bones. And what this is, what your sinuses are um, there to do is allow for air to enter but to, you know, catch bad things from getting too far. And that mucus um, that lines them, because it is mucus lined, it's produced by those goblet cells that we talked about in. Um, chapter four in the tissue chapter, and the um, that mucus is going to be recycled because your goblet cells are producing um, mucus all the time. So it's going to drain into the nasal cavity eventually, and it helps uh, lighten the skull and enhance uh, the resonance of the voice. And so you can see where the paranasal sinuses are located, and um, we've all had you know colds or sinus infections and. You kind of know where those um, pressure points are when your sinuses are um, uh, full of mucus and not draining properly. <clears throat> um, the hyoid bone is not part of the vertebral column and it's actually not part of the skull, but it is this very funny bone that is um, located inferior to the mandible and what it, um, why it's funny is it's considered to be a floating bone. It does not directly articulate, it's the only bone in the body that does not direct, directly articulate with um, any other bone. And so what it is going to allow you to do, it allows you to lower and raise the larynx and it also um, supports your tongue when you are swallowing <clears throat> or when you're talking. Um, the vertebral column is formed from 26 irregular bones and what these bones do is it allows us to stand up, right, one, um, but it is protecting your spinal cord. So your spinal cord runs through the vertebra and then the, um, the different nerves are allowed to then branch from there. We have three different types of uh, vertebra. Um, we have cervical vertebra, you have seven cervical vertebra, that would be considered your neck. Uh, thoracic vertebra, that is the um, bones of the torso, there are 12 thoracic vertebra. And then lumbar vertebra, there are five, and it is considered uh, to be your lower back. The sacrum um, is inferior to the lumbar uh, vertebra, and it is considered to be five fused vertebra. And then the coccyx is usually four fused uh, vertebra and called the tailbone. So this is what um, your vertebral column looks like. And you can see that it's curved. You've got uh, curvatures all the way down to uh, make sure that we can um, handle the body weight because we do stand upright which is a little different than most animals and you can see where the um, cervical vertebra stop then you have your thoracic lumbar sacrum and coccyx <clears throat> no. um, has curvatures like i said before to support an upright human being um, you have posterior posteriorly concave curvatures in the cervical and lumbar portions and then a convex curvature in the thoracic and sacral uh, area. And um, there are some uh, disorders where there's abnormal spine uh, curvatures. One of the most common is scoliosis where the um, instead of the regular curvatures of the spine you end up having a lateral curvature. Um, kyphosis is a hunchback issue where the, the back is curled over so that um, you can't stand quite upright. And then lordosis is considered sway back. The general structure of a vertebra um, is the same throughout most of our vertebral column. Um, so most vertebra, all but one, has something called a body or centrum, and that's the weight-bearing region. Um, it's very large, uh, thick, and that is also where fibrocartilaginous pads or discs lie to allow for that um, shock absorption. Then you have something called a vertebral arch, um, and it's composed of laminae, which are the bony portions on each side, the centrum, and then that all makes a big hole called a foramen, and um, that is where our spinal cord actually passes. 
they did name that foramen and it's called the vertebral foramen and that is again where that spinal cord is uh, passing through. And then towards the back or the posterior portion of the body you have something called a spinous process and the spinous process those are the little bumps that you can feel if you kind of run your finger um, down your spine. So this is what a, a general uh, vertebra looks like. Here's the um, body, the bony portion that's going to support the weight. You've got the foramen, uh, which is going to allow the spinal cord to pass. This is the lamina. So this is the portion where you're going to have, um, or the bony portion. You have your transverse process. Those are um, lateral processes. And then your spinous process uh, is your posterior process. Now, and when we're talking about the different vertebra, we just number them. So we have seven cervical vertebra, and we just number them C1, C2, C3, C4, etc. Same with thoracic, same with lumbar. Um, but because uh, the first two cervical vertebra are different than any other vertebra in the body, they've named them. And so C1, uh, the first cervical vertebra is called Atlas. And if you think about Atlas, um, the man who has the world on his shoulders, um, the atlas in the body has the head um, on, you know, on it. It is actually bearing the weight of the head. Um, so <clears throat> it's, it's a little unique. It doesn't look like the rest of the vertebra. It does not have a body or a centrum, and it doesn't have a spinous process. Um, so what it is going to do is it's going to allow for the occipital bones. There's these little condyles that are going to articulate with that and it's going to allow you to nod up and down and say yes. So this is what it looks like and you can see it doesn't have a, a large spinous process like the rest, <clears throat> doesn't have a body here, does have the transverse uh, process and here's where it's going to articulate with the occipital bone. The axis is C2, it's the second cervical vertebra, and it again doesn't look like the rest, so they named this one the axis. And they named it the axis because it allows your head to actually pivot. And so it does have a body, it has the spine, um, but it has this very unique part called a dens, and it's a process that is going to um, go straight up through the atlas and it's going to allow you to rotate your head and to say no. And so this is what the axis looks like. You've got your transverse process, you've got your spinous process like all the others, but here's where the dens is. It, it juts up off of the body and it allows your head to pivot.